Welcome to part three of why make your own rubric. All right, double click outside the footer and you can see it grays out telling us that we are now back inside the full body of the design. All right, now for the fun part, we actually get to begin to design these tables. Now, as I stated earlier, we're probably going to want to unify the color scheme with what we have in our header and footer. And so remember, we had black lettering, some blue lettering, and some gray table structure. And so if we click on, you'll see as I hover near this table, I get this little four-way arrow. If I click on that four-way arrow, and then I go here to where it says Table Tools, left-click on Design, you'll see that as I hover over each of these, it actually changes the look of that table. All right, and so if I click here on this More, you'll actually see that I can actually change this in a variety of ways. Now I'm going to probably stick with this column since it has the color scheme that I used in my header. If you remember the color scheme was gray and blue so I'm going to stick with this whatever I do. Um, probably something like this will look pretty good or you know what I'll tell you what let's change that instead of this one again I'm going to go with this top one because that leaves plenty of space. If I left click outside, it leaves plenty of space for my students to create their name, to write their class, and to write the date here in the top. Now, we could just apply the same settings to this one by going to t selecting the four way arrow, which selects the entire table, go to design and then simply select here. But the problem is it does not draw lines to distinguish between my columns and I don't like that too much. So what I'm going to do is actually select one in this same column something more along the lines of this. I kinda like this. This looks like a sh very strong design but I'm gonna select this one on the bottom because of the variations and I want to be able to show you how to make those columns stand out. So you'll notice in here we've got a separate section for criterion. There are no lines so it's a little bit difficult to see where one begins and one ends. And especially here I want to make this so that there are definite lines that define my column widths. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to select from content just left click and drag all the way across until the body of my table is selected. Then I'm going to right click and scroll down to where it says borders and shading. Now here in borders and shading you can do a lot of different things. You can change the style of your lines and there's all kinds of different styles that you can actually use. So that's something to play around with. But I'm going to stick with the regular style. But what I am going to change is the fact that I want in between my columns to be defined and I want in between my rows to be defined and so I'm actually going to select these two this defines each row this defines each column and it applies it to each cell and then I'm going to click OK now by the way you could also change the color which I'm not going to do I like that color so again once I've done that you'll notice that now I can see where my content is different from my form, is different from participation, my mastery is different from articulate, from adequate, my columns and rows are more well defined but I can still see the design elements that I liked from this table. Alright now the next thing we're going to do is click inside each of these and we would actually inside here I'm just gonna click enter two times to show you how this works basically the table will actually modify to the text that you put in there so I'm clicking enter two times in each of these just to show you how the table works now of course to for the student to get a grade of four or mastery we would want to define what does mastery look like and so we would actually use text 
and I'll just put this in there here we would use text to define exactly what is needed for a grade of four and the same would be true of any of these so for articulate we would define what articulate looks like on your project or writing or other work. So again, in each of these boxes, we would define what each of these means. What does it mean to be advanced for your form to be advanced? What does it mean for your participation to be great, to be good, to be okay, or to be poor? So we want definite parameters defined within each of these boxes.